Well, great to see you again once uh, again for our Bible study uh, here at uh, Good Shepherd in Appleton, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, we continue the season of Lent in our study about uh, repentance and forgiveness and, and Jesus' great desire, his great passion uh, for us um, and uh, his, his longing that all are redeemed. And so as we continue our study today, let's uh, begin our prayer uh, with prayer. For Lent, our general Lent prayer from Portals of Prayer. Heavenly Father, throughout these 40 days of Lent, draw us even closer to you. Help us lay aside the sins that cling so closely and run with endurance the race that is before us, looking to Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, as we have been made one with him through baptism, empower us to share the good news of your grace with others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is a journey, the Lent season, and uh, we're just really at the beginning of it, uh, but it is a time for all of us to think about our sin and our need for a Savior. And the good news about uh, the text for the Sundays of Lent is they are reminding us that God has come for you and for me that in him there is forgiveness, life, and salvation. So receive it, you know, in faith and rejoice in it. Uh, but here we have some sorrow um, that Jesus is uh, dealing with, uh, with his uh, people, with the Pharisees, the leaders of uh, the word of God at, in that day. And uh, their lack of belief in the Lord and their direct hatred toward Jesus in such a way uh, that they are they are seeking ways uh, to um, to destroy Jesus message and to do away with Jesus himself they both go hand in hand don't they so lament over Jerusalem at that very hour some Pharisees came and said to him get away from here for Herod wants to kill you and he said to them go and tell that box behold I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. What did Jesus uh, mean by today and tomorrow? Uh, one thing that we uh, can remember about uh, God and his plan, his timing, is that God's plan and timing is always going to be fulfilled in the way that he wants it to be done at the right time. Because at the right time is the perfect time uh, for what God wants to accomplish for everyone. So even as we looked at transfiguration not too long ago, um, and the disciples weren't supposed to tell anybody what they had seen, is it be it's because it wasn't the right time for it, that people weren't fully uh, understanding who Jesus is. And this needed still uh, more preaching and teaching to be done, and the Holy Spirit to work faith in their hearts. So here, as we look at today and tomorrow, while this anger and, and hatred and animosity is toward Jesus, uh, that means even more so he has work to do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be here today and tomorrow, very deliberate way of saying, you're not going to push me out, uh, not going to threaten me and therefore cause me to leave. I'm staying right here. People need me. The message of repentance and forgiveness must be proclaimed. So Jesus stands firm in his uh, task. Not my time, not yet. But what was the course that he would finish on the third day? Jesus is uh, prophesying, uh, of course, about his uh, death, uh, in which he was delivered over into the hands of the sinful men in Jerusalem, suffer, die, three days later, rise again. So he will finish uh, his course, and he will finish it according to God's plan, and he will finish it on the third day as he said that he uh, would. Uh, that declares our victory, the Easter uh, victory of Christ no longer in the tomb. Uh, so Jesus said, uh, you know, again, he is, <laughs> his passion for us and for the world is evident here. He wants all to believe and be saved. Why was there an urgency on Jesus' part to finish his course in Jerusalem and not let it happen prematurely elsewhere? Well, where was, why was Jerusalem so significant? 
a place where the temple was built, where the sacrificial system uh, was in place uh, for the forgiveness of sins uh, that God gave to his people. Uh, so Jerusalem is, is where Jesus gives his body the temple, right? And he is sacrificed on behalf of the world. Uh, so Jerusalem is significant uh, for uh, Jesus to finish his course there um, and uh, to uh, do what, uh, again, God has uh, given his, his son to do and to do it in, in a way that draws all people to himself. And also, you know, great concentration of uh, those who needed to hear the message uh, would be there also. Um, so there's a lot of uh, plan and purpose um, for what God does. And I think that's important for all of us to remember when we question God's timing or ways. God's way and timing is always directed what is best for our salvation, best for our eternity. Uh, nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often when I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you will not, you would not, exclamation point. What feelings do you think were in Jesus' heart? Uh, he, as he said these words, remember this is a lament over Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus, I mean, how can you be in any, uh, anything other than sorrow? I must go on my way tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. You know, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. Uh, it's, it's the same feeling we have maybe about ourselves or about others when you know the right thing to be doing, but and you instill that into someone else and they just don't do it and and we don't do it and and here's here's your here's your uh safety uh you know the safety line you need here it's like throwing out um a lifesaver life preserver right into the water you're, you're drowning and it's right there for you and you just reject it no i don't need it i'm fine on my own um, it's, it's that approach we're taking here uh, that, that these uh, people in Jerusalem are, are, are doing, the Pharisees included. Um, so it's very frustrating, uh, lamenting their unbelief, their rejection. Now, Jerusalem means a city of peace, but it did not live up to its name. Jesus' words indicated uh, the people of Jerusalem were for rejecting, or indicted the people of Jerusalem for rejecting and stoning those who God sent to her uh, with the message of peace. Why is it that the people of Jerusalem are not willing to accept God's invitation? Well, it's the same reason why people don't accept God's invitation today. You know, recently I saw a, uh, a commentary uh, by one of the Christian leaders in our world. I mean, we may not always agree with what he has to say, but nonetheless, he said that when he views the invasion of Russia uh, to Ukraine, that he equated that with Armageddon. And, there were, and Armageddon is, you know, Christ's return when he will judge the living and the dead. Now, for some, when they saw this, commenta uh, this, this commentary by this religious leader, Christian leader, you know, they mocked him and uh, dismissed it and um, poked fun at it, really, um, that Armageddon's not real, that there's no judgment day, and that, you know, basically um, to believe in Jesus is just something that's made up. And so why weren't they willing to, to, to you know, hear what this man had to say? Because they are in their sin. They're in, they're in darkness. Uh, it's frustrating, I think, as Christians in particular, when we are those who know the blessing of being a child of God and receive his forgiveness and live in faith and, uh, and those who just don't care and they don't realize how uh, wrong they are. Uh, but they will realize it unless they believe uh, at Judgment Day. Uh, for every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. What was the inevitable result of their rejections? Well, 
that Jesus would be killed. Uh, prophetic words. Jesus will return. Palm Sunday, receive uh, the accolades. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then they'll be shouting, crucify him. Uh, crucify him later that week. Uh, so Jesus knew uh, Jerusalem's history. Uh, but he also, uh, Jesus comes to bring peace. And peace only comes uh, through his sacrifice uh, on the cross. Removing our sin and God's wrath for sin. So there's peace between God and man by God's grace through faith. But this is, you know, I think as we read God's word, we're, we're typically, you know, a, a reading uh, Jesus as a very optimistic and happy uh, person. Uh, but this, this text in particular gives us that other side of Jesus um, as the disciples, as you and I face, as Christians uh, in an unbelieving world. So Jesus continues, uh, but you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, this is a world of pathos in Jesus, and you would not. God's grace and his servants had been repeatedly and obstinately obstin 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 uh, denied. Uh, by insisting on having God only on their own terms, the Pharisees were rejecting God himself. So they were being obstinate uh, in the sense that salvation is not by Jesus, not by what he is going to do for them. They were trusting in their own works and their own efforts, so they were obstinate in, in rejection to uh, Jesus' message, God only on their own terms, in which, you know, what do you need God for if you can save yourself? Or uh, to say that this is the kind of God that we want for our lives. Uh, what was Jesus' intention in saying this lament within the hearing of the Pharisees? You know, back here, uh, some Pharisees came and said to him, uh, Jesus wasn't going to allow people who even had status to perish. He knew that they hated him. He knew that they, they would uh, incite the crowd against him, but they needed him then, right, like everyone else. So um, it wasn't about uh, letting the Pharisees uh, be comfortable in their sin and, and, and letting them be comfortable in their sin, meaning that you don't even care about their eternity either. It would have been easy for Jesus to do that, as we like to do maybe with our enemies, is fine. Wait till Christ comes, and that'll be the end of you. That we should uh, speak the gospel to all people, especially uh, our enemies. It says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, or Yahweh. It's from Psalm 118, 26, in this messianic, in this full meaning. When was this later latter spoken? The people in Jerusalem had already said Palm Sunday, uh, the day of Jesus' triumphant uh, entry into Jerusalem the colt, the foal of a donkey. Why was their enthusiasm on that occasion short-lived? Well, because later that week, they, um, Jesus would be arrested, put on trial, and they would uh, announce the judgment of crucifixion, death, upon Jesus. What does it say to us that it was the most religiously privileged who rejected and opposed Jesus again? Just because you're considered to be intelligent or you're considered to be uh, those closest to anything doesn't mean that you understand it. It doesn't mean that, that you appreciate it. And unfortunately, those are those, there are those who study God's word and still reject the Holy Spirit's work. They're very knowledgeable about the Lord, uh, but don't see him as their Lord. Um, you know, they can confess Jesus as a, as a man, a historical figure, but their heart is far from Jesus. Uh, so they continue to reject the Holy Spirit, continue to reject the gospel call. Um, so they're still dead in their sins. What does the fact that Jesus said his lament in their presence say to us? Um, well, it's a reminder of God's passion and care for all the world. He came into this world that by hearing him by seeing his uh, works done in righteousness that all the world would believe in him and uh, what more could Jesus do uh, 
other than go to the cross, suffer, die, and ultimately rise again. Uh, so his lament is, you know, now is the day of salvation. Don't put off any longer uh, where you are at. He heed my words and believe and be saved. So Jesus has this lament, uh, short text in Luke 13, 31 to 35, and it's, it's really a reminder of Jesus' love and care for Jerusalem and their rejection of him, but yet Jesus does things on his own terms, right? That's what I want to focus on today. It's only a matter of time. Not your time uh, the, the, to those who uh, had their way, but according to God's time and his plan and his will. And fortunately for us, God's plan and timing and will was all to save the world. And so he has. So as you go through this Lenten season and you think about your sins and, and it is a time of lamenting over them and and realizing what we've done in our thoughts, words, and deeds, know that Jesus has come for you and that he has forgiven your sins. And in him, by faith, you also have life and salvation. Well, thanks again for joining me today as we uh, journey on uh, during this season of Lent and as we remember our Savior and his uh, passion for us and for all people.